Right. So, Phil, we also wanted to understand, Ellen, for the last many years now, has been interacting with the Indian Academy, the IITs and the Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore, and many other such institutes. What is new on that front? Because you are, you know, encouraging the concept of startup India, and you're also encouraging through that the concept of, you know, catching them young. So, what is new on that front? Sure. Well, um, over the last, um, well, for the, we are now in our 13th year of supporting the India Innovation and Growth Programme, which is a partnership we formed uh, initially with Department of Science and Technology, with FICI, with the India-US Science and Technology Forum, Stanford University, amongst others, uh, supporting us to um, uh, promote and support innovators in India. We recognize India as being um, having a wealth of innovators, but not necessarily all of those innovators had a path to market. So we tried to help fix that by introducing this program in, our, in, in as much as we could. <clears throat> that was, program was you know, very successful over the first uh, 10 years. And um, uh, from, for the last three years, we introduced uh, new partners. So we got Tada Trust that are now uh, a partner along with the Department of Science and Technology and ourselves. Uh, we've actually transferred the academic link from the U.S. to India. So we have IMM Amnabad uh, that is uh, participating in the program. IIT Bangalore, uh, sorry, IIT Bombay uh, is also uh, part of the program, and and the piece that IIT Bombay runs is what they call a university what we call a university challenge so we're not just looking at startups we're also looking at uh, the kids in school and trying to encourage them to develop to invent to innovate uh, through our university challenge and we establish what those challenges are uh, each year you, each university applies and we have hundreds of applicants typically from all over uh, India and it's not just the IETs it's from uh, tier uh, two tier three cities um, you know some of the smaller academic uh, institutions I think last year or the year before we had uh, a winner from Kashmir in you know one of the more remote uh, colleges up there so um, we're in, not just encouraging the startups and I, I think you know we had a, an Ernst and Young report uh, written for the 10th year anniversary where uh, they estimated that the, the program itself had generated something in the region of $900 million and uh, 400 business relationships had been formed through it, uh, which is a great success That's for the first nine years. So I, I, I daren't estimate beyond because we don't have the facts, but uh, it's been very successful. So we've include we where we were doing things individually as a company with universities we've decided to include universities as part of this program to be able to get the network a lot further and be able to meet with a lot more academic institutions a lot more students uh, going through Lockheed Martin is a big believer in stem education and encouraging people uh, down that uh, road and so this is just really another mechanism to be able to do that Thank you so much, Phil. It was lovely speaking with you and such a long time since we spoke yeah, a year plus. Thanks, Atta.